Christo Stoichkov. Look where his run starts from. He split them. He split the C. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Comes from miles outside the box and then just passes it bottom corner. Love, 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 love. No, that, in fact, comes later anyway. Oh, <laughs> there's nothing you can do that can't be done, Seb. <laughs> and there's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. And there's nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game, James. It's easy. <laughs> All you need is love, Seb. <laughs> All you need is love. <laughs> Love. Seb is all you need. <laughs> Hello and welcome oh, to reminding you, you why you love football. Tommy, don't talk over me. You've put it in the notes. Shut up. <laughs> a podcast hosted by me, Owen Blackhurst. We have had a life-affirming message slip into our DMs recently and that is why we are singing All You Need Is Love by The Beatles. Seb's second favourite band from Liverpool, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> hey guys, greetings from Nairobi. I'm not sure if I'm your only fan based in Nairobi, brackets, I actually doubt it, you're not, I've checked. But I'm pretty sure I'm your biggest fan from these parts. I've been listening to Mundal for the past couple of years since COVID, when I became obsessed with the Giants series, as you should, it was very good. I had the Ian Wright episode saved on my Spotify downloads for months and would occasionally listen to it on repeat when I had nothing else to listen to. When RYWYLF, that's us, started, I have to admit I was sceptical. But one morning while reviewing contracts at work, brackets, a lawyer, it stumbled into my podcast rotation and I haven't looked back since. We were sceptical too, to be fair. <laughs> Do you know what? He's got it bang on. If I'm being perfectly honest, I wasn't a fan initially, but a couple of episodes in and the Baggio episode made me take notice. Ah, uh, yeah. What happened on the Baggio episode? It Did was just us four? Correct. We used Riverside, so actually it didn't sound like we'd recorded from Tommy's pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god that back to Nairobi the four episode run from Maradona's Law to the Hamzik episode made me a true fan the Rashidi Akini and Dr. Kamalo episodes though were some of your best work I would agree maybe yeah. it's because I'm African and we don't hear stories of some of these cult footballers from the continent but they were beautiful stories and beautifully told oh. P.S. The singing bits during We Support These and Mascots of the World, I absolutely love them. Yes. Hopefully we get a chance to get back to Bollywood soon. And that's why we sang All You Need Is Love, because of this beautiful review from Nairobi. Um, I'm not sure I can, how much I can quantify uh, how much we love hearing stuff like this. Mm. If this is your first time, <laughs> then we might not have a celebrity name attached, no matter what Tommy tells his mates. <laughs> we, don't really do this, we don't really do this full time, <laughs> and Athletic Greens don't seem to want to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> the broccoli powdering wankers. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyway. for the listeners, this isn't all in the same DM from the. From the guys from the <laughs> no, no, this, this is me now. But but what we do do, we don't get powdered broccoli, but we reach people's hearts on every continent, and you cannot manufacture that. Yeah. Joining me today to spread the love far and wide are James Paul Christian Bird, Sebastian Dennis White, and Thomas Andrew Stewart, otherwise known as the Goblin. The Gooser and Tankman. Hey, <laughs> Tankman. A trio of men I would go into battle with but wouldn't invite round for dinner at the same time. Ah, <laughs> yes. All you need this is Seb. Do, 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 do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fucking hell, right? I was interested you in You don't know it. the Beatles. No, no, I do. I was just you enjoying it. You can't sing. It's quite nice someone's the, singing a song about me. The one thing you can do is the bloody mouth trumpet. <laughs> go Let's go again. All you need is Seb. <laughs> All you need is Seb. All you need is Seb. Seb. Seb is all you need. That's it. We are 4.9 on Apple, 5 star on Spotify. We cannot sing, but this is reminding you why you love football, a part of the ACAST Creator Network. Let's get it. Someone's had a fucking flat white on the way, you know, haven't they? Oh, someone else who just can't let air be dead. <laughs> As Assad was there last week, couldn't do it. You're here do, today. Do you know, do you know to, what? Seem to be wearing his cords. Do you know can't what? Do I don't think any of us can. <laughs> Adventures in Clubland. <laughs> right then, Adventures in Clubland this week Indian Summers Loans and Last Chance Saloons. It is me. I. It's not me. We're not talking about my spell for Warfield. Uh, in the 90s <laughs> or a little spell uh, playing with Pill Clinton at British Gap <laughs> oh. we're not talking about that 
<laughs> All my time playing for Dare Agency in the advertising fiver side league when I picked up quite a few yellow cards. We're not talking about any of those things. We're talking about Christo Stoichkov because today, the day this podcast is out, it's his birthday. <gasps> oh. There are loads of places yeah. we could have gone uh, with Stoichkov. Easy one would be Barca, but... Um, I wrote about him in the magazine recently. We were going to go to his managerial career because of some wonderful YouTube interviews that Seb found. Um, and we've talked a little bit about him at Chicago Fire before. So I thought we would go right back to the start and bookend his career in Bulgaria. So he'd played third division football. Um, he, was a, he wasn't like an instant prodigy, um, but he'd scored a decent amount of goals in the third division, got a move to CSK, uh, one of the traditionally one of the two biggest teams in, in Bulgaria. And his career was nearly over before it started. In the 1985 Bulgarian Cup final, uh, a violent match between uh, CSK and, and Levski, which caused ruction upon ruction upon ruction. They both had to change their names after the game. <laughs> Such was the ferocity of it. Um, like Players were handed fucking different bands. Stoichkov wasn't sent off in the game but was banned for life after it what? for his, for his part in the ructions, yeah. And it was only afterwards that his ban was overturned. They, people thought he was done. Wow. Donzo. Who's banned him then? The, their FA? The Bulgarian mm. FA, Fuck. yeah. Who, in the late, in, you know, in the mid to late <laughs> 80s, let's say was still a little bit authoritarian. Yeah. Is that... <laughs> well, they were also, one of the uh, cup trophies he won three times with um, CSK Sofia was called the um, Soviet Army Cup. Uh, different yeah. times. Different times. Different times, but what he did do was, as you would expect for Histo Stoichkov, score a lot of goals, and it's safe to say he blazed a fucking trail across Europe. And CSK would have, were in Cup Winners' Cups and Champions Leagues and stuff like that, so he got seen a lot. In 1989-90, he won the European Golden Shoe. He scored oh, wow. 38 goals in 30 games and 48 overall or something fucking bananas, <sighs> but... It was two goals he scored against Barcelona, which led to him, which led to Johan Cruyff signing him. And I think you've all seen it now. James might not have, but there is a chip he scores in a, um, a European game against Barcelona, oh. and he gets he gets he gets released, I believe, by um, Emil Kostadinov. Yeah who would also play with him in the that great Bulgarian team who beat Germany at uh, USA 94. And he gets released. It's a very old school, 80s offside trap he manages mm. to break. And he's... You remember that one when... The one when Maradona breaks the AC Milan offside trap? In the, mm. It's very similar to that. It's, yeah. in, it, it's not yeah. as fast forward and mental, but it's not far. He's got half a pitch to himself. He's got half yeah. a pitch to himself. Yeah, yeah. But this is the best bit. He could just really waltz around the keeper if he wants. Zuba Zaretta comes running out to about the edge of his box. Yep. Stoichkov doesn't take a touch. He doesn't go round him. <laughs> he doesn't do anything apart from just fucking stab the ball and hit the most fucking delightful chip that floats over the keeper and rolls in and off he's gone. And do you know what? James hasn't seen it and James likes a goal, so I'm going to show him. I quite like goals. It, it's lovely. Oh. It, it reminds you, you know how I said, said Griezmann fucks it in. This is fucking... No, 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 no. See, I didn't... I... That's how you chip a ball, Tommy. And I know we know you didn't spend a lot of time on the pitch as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Every game that season. Every game I played. <laughs> Little Tommy warm up, they called him. <laughs> it's not true. Real, he's a real It's cut not man. true. You can't chip the ball in one of those big sub suits, can you? They're too heavy. <laughs> it wasn't the clubman of the year, it was the manager's player of the year. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the club? Anyway, <laughs> there was literally a most improved vote, which I didn't win. I won the manager. <laughs> it's the same thing. No, it's not. <sighs> Seb will see it. Well. my childhood. This is coming up. Seb will see it again. Right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they filmed it on a potato. <laughs> Time. Oh. Oh. It's not Love. It's not fucking it in It's, no, cudd it's, cudd it's cuddling it in I misremembered it Everything you need to know About Risto Stoichkov You can see in the, in, in the, these two goals these two, yeah. Anyone not been able to watch this It's a beautiful chip From a wonderful player He's already wearing number 8 It's a, a Hall of Fame uh, CSK away Adidas kit With no sponsor on it It's like yeah. something You might turn up And just see on the marshes On a Sunday morning yeah. <laughs> just, some yeah. just some team of brickies Wearing yeah, 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 yeah. And one of them's got blue socks on and they all fucking hate him for it. <laughs> but they can't say anything because he's the artist. Now, he gets a penalty. You never see this anymore. No. I, I, I cannot remember seeing this for years, if I've ever seen it before. So, Stoichkov gets a penalty, he puts the ball down and he starts to walk back. And the Barcelona players are crowing at him on the edge of the box. He doesn't stop in the box. Out the fucking way, you. Look where his run starts from. Go on, fuck off. He split them. He split the C. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Comes from miles outside the box and then just passes it bottom corner. Yeah. And 
I feel quite lucky in that I stopped liking football for about two or three years. A bit because of Graham Souness being Liverpool manager and it just all went to shit. He sold all my childhood heroes. Mm. A bit sort of my parents got divorced and I wasn't really into it. And a bit I was just raising hell. <laughs> so football didn't really come in to, fit into that mm -hmm. um, the narrative of my life at the time. You know, you can't play much football when you're chain smoking Benson and Edges with 16 year olds, can you? However, when I came back to it, there was an explosion of Kappa kits and shit like this. The dream and, team and stuff, yeah. But I just, Stoichkov, nicknamed the Dagger. Oh. And, oh, fucking hell, imagine, what's your nickname? The Dagger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine how much you'd like to be called the dagger instead yeah. of Birdo. Or, <laughs> or Goblin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or the Tank Man. Tank Man's pretty good, actually. I was, yeah. th th what they called me on um, that thing was Benevolent Dictator. It's not even a nickname, it's just a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the Benevolent Dictator Blackhurst. I'd leave fucking rolls off the tongue, does benevolent it? Benevolent Dictator. dictator. Yes. Yeah, and that's fine. It's just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is just a fact. It is just a fact. You know, I, I'll explain to anyone who's listening to this, if you want to look behind the scenes, uh, there can be no democracy in content. There can be democracy to a point, but at some point there's got to be a, you know, there's, there's got to be a single, a single view. Democracy doesn't work. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> Reminding you while of military history takes a turn. <laughs> exactly. I didn't used to think this until... That's, um, that's, that's exactly the kind of thing that a benevolent dictator would say, isn't it? Correct. Well, democracy Great doesn't nickname. work. But that's, benevolent. Um, yeah. Sort of familiar, that sort of rhetoric. <laughs> And I bet you Stoichkov knows all about benevolent dictators <laughs> growing up uh, growing up in the under, block. Uh, under the communist doesn't, jack boot. Yeah. Dogs, it doesn't work. You guys don't need a say in things. <laughs> oh, no, you can have a say. Yeah, yeah. I just won't take any notice. Yeah. Anyway, I've got your best interest think, at heart. Back to Stoichkov, back yes, to Stoichkov. Yes, yes. It was, it's always, it's, you cannot say the name Risto Stoichkov without saying brooding. So let's get it out of the way, the brooding striker <laughs> yeah. now. I love everything about him. He looks like he's straight out of a Western, matchstick in the corner <laughs> of the mouth, five o'clock shadow, hat. Mm. And he's such a good footballer. And there was, there's a YouTube video titled Kids These Days Don't Know Stoichkov, which is <laughs> oh, true. And yeah. I, I sort of feel like I'm now, or we're on a, a mission to A, find players like Dr. Kamalo and, and talk about them, and B, make sure that Stoichkov... People know he had a career before Barcelona and, and what came last, but what came after that? I mean, look, he went on to win the Ballon d'Or. Mm -hmm. yeah. Him and Romario are playing up front together as Ballon, <laughs> holder of the Ballon d'Or and the FIFA World Player of the Year because mm. Romario couldn't win that. <laughs> Stoichkov finished second to him in the FIFA World Player of the Year while he held the Ballon d'Or. So he was, he was mustered. I mean, the, the 94 World Cup is his high point and what they did. You know, they had a keeper who wore a wig. <laughs> Boris. Boris oh, I love, yeah. yeah. A keeper who wore a wig. Reading legend. A second striker who should have worn a wig. Oh. Jordan Lechkov. Le oh, yes. And Bulgaria and his blistering free kicks. But there was Stoichkov's touch. If, if fans of the Ronaldinho catching the ball on his chest, Stoichkov used to do that all the time. Right. But he would roam. He was never... He wasn't constra constrained to just being a central striker. He would roam right, he would roam left, he would drop deep. He had a beautiful passing range, like a classic left foot traction engine and can open it and magic wand all in one. Yeah. And I just love him. He's the like he would be if I was sitting down to write top five footballers who had the most impact on me. I would say aesthetically and emotionally and and and, and everything that's good about football as a teenager, not as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as that, a kid, it's different because it's the team you support, right? Mm. And you might like a few of the people. Of like, course, yeah. Except, yeah. Except loves so you're saying he's in there, top five. Stoichkov for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, straight in, mate. That that comes across on. Straight the, in. I mean, I'm not just saying this. It sounds like something that um, one of the oppressed people would say to a dictator. But Owen's piece in this in this <laughs> lecture <laughs> is genuinely is genuinely brilliant, and it's it great is. writing. It sums those two players up brilliantly, particularly Stoichkov. Uh, and I think I'll go back to my own memory of Stoichkov was, and Owen mentioned very briefly there about the Kappa kits. Now, oh. whoever went on holiday around that time, <laughs> so your Mallorcas or your, your, yeah, your Mallorcas or your Portugals or something like that, you would see... Your Mallorcas. Your Mallorcas. Your Mallorcas. Your Mallorcas. Your Mallorcas. You would see these, shall we say... Well, hooky Barcelona shirts. Yeah. But it, instead of the Kappa logo, it would just be diamonds. But and it would have and it would either be Stoichkov or Romario. And done this was obviously in, in the days really when before the names and numbers were like a unified thing where everyone it all looked the same. Mm. It just looked like they'd done it on Word Art, you know. And it, I remember it had a box around the name, Stoichkov, and then it was these those were good days. It was also those were good and, days. And I and I did write about this in the cult issue, but for anyone listening who, who, who doesn't read it, there was it was also where he met um, Trifon Ivanov, who was the captain of the Mundial oh, Stars in our, our cult yeah. issue. And they yeah. um Stoichkov was 
they were very, very, very good mates. They played in a few wonderful um, victories over Levski. One famous 5-0 when Ivanov scored. And um, at- the Wolfman and the Dagger. And then when, when Ivanov died, Stoichkov oh. um, played in a charity game and held his, his, his mate's shirt up. And he was seen crying over the crying and talking to him and over the coffin at the, at the funeral. It's quite a, powerful, quite a powerful image. But what he's also got is, and I have to say this because there's got to be balance in journalism. And yes. this, this isn't some dodgy views. It's his clothing range. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get in, get what? in. What? Can we do a collab? Plan? What is? Oh. I have no idea. <laughs> Some real Tommy Stu Sk- gear. This is it. <laughs> so really yeah. cool, really class. Clothes. Zip cardigans, that sort of sh- malarkey. I'm not. I have hey, no idea what me. you're going to. Sh- that's not me. Come no, on. it's not you. I'm, no, I'm no. not Logan Roy. No, no. <laughs> He's got the lot. <gasps> I had no idea. Sports suits, sweatshirts, sports bottoms, t-shirts, jackets, shorts, and Bermuda shirts, blouses, sweaters, Blouse. shirts, jeans, swimwear. Oh. Swimwear. Look at, Seb's, look at Seb's trainers. Imagine. And accessories. In, so Imagine rocking up to your Mallorcas, yeah. your Marbella's, and a pair of Storchkov swim shorts. Yeah, so. I've... Oh, oh, I did not know this. Let's just pick one section. Where would we like to go? I think we sort of know what's up here. I would like Blouse. us to maybe gravitate towards the, the sweaters and blouses. Yeah, 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 blouses. Head in, head in. <laughs> Blouses, I think, you know. I don't, they're, not blou- they're, not, they're not blouses. They're not blouses. 27 blouses he's got. They're not blouses. <laughs> he means, he oh. means tops. They're, no, these, they're not women's tops, though. They're just high necks. <laughs> so blouses much mean something different. <laughs> Eightristo.com. Now, we, we should probably show some of these. Let's have a look at the socks, shall we? There's more them. than a hint of Burton here, isn't there? Yeah. Well, what, has, what has happened? Terry Burton. 2005, Burton. What has yeah. happened... Is he these, he's either been gifted a factory in lieu of some wages, <laughs> this is... or he's ended up buying a factory and they produce all of this, so yeah. he's just put his logo on everything. <laughs> Ooh, mummy. Is that a gold chain? If oh. someone doesn't get oh me the, my gil- God. the gilded plate necklace with a leather strap, <laughs> where, 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 where. I can see it. This is like fucking supermarket sweep for Gareth Ainsworth. This is incredible. <laughs> yeah, lads. Oh. We are looking at a sock. Hang oh, on. my God. <laughs> Stop the clocks. <laughs> Why has it got a Thank Wi-Fi you, signal in the sock? <laughs> well, it's a baggy sock, isn't it? That? It's a card holder. Yes, it with is. a card holder in that, your sock. That's the that sock is to sneak drugs into festivals. Yes, it is. <laughs> I think it's for a knife, James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for I a think dagger. Risto Stoichkov would have kept a knife in that, and he would slightly, slightly puncturing the the rib oh pages of, of defenders. Who wants to? Some, someone describe what it is um, for, the, for the listeners. It's, it's the worst sock ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's black with a white um, Google, with a white Excel spreadsheet yes. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yes, with, yes. With, with all the data taken out of. Yeah. Bit like one of Seb's. Bit like one of Seb's, yeah. He's just, black, he's just blacked out all the fields and had three months off. Um, and it's got a pocket in it for your cards or your dagger or your, or your coke. Just to be fair to Stoikoff here, on the website is a card. It's a card holder. It is a card. It is, yeah. He's also got a gold-plated ball necklace with leather strap, which he clearly can't call the Ballon d'Or necklace. But that's what it is. Oh, oh. Do you know what? If I'd have won the Ballon d'Or and I had the profile to release a Ballon d'Or necklace, I'd do it. Anything to add? There is something I'd like to add very quickly, which is that uh, you mentioned about the sort of chest, his chest action just now, similar to Ronaldinho. I saw on Twitter this morning somebody had posted a slowed down video of Ronaldinho sort of juggling with his chest and quote tweeted it saying, me at my nan's funeral whilst with a balloon whilst my mum and dad are crying in the corner. <laughs> 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 Nothing to do with storage cop, but a very good story. That's yeah, a very yeah. good story. Good. I, think we good. Can, I think we should end it there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Midfield blunt rotation. I don't know how we're going to get into this apart from uh, James. You got your rolling mat? <laughs> Seb, you got the herb? <laughs> Always. <laughs> In my sock. Tommy, not you and me. We'll just have to watch. <laughs> It's a gateway gateway drug after all. (laughs) Uh, Midfield blunt rotation. It was back. It's been back. It was back a couple of weeks ago and people liked the new way we'd done it and there was um, a lot of love for it uh, here here and there. So it's back again. Sebastian Dennis White, it's up to you, brother. So let's just start right at the very top with this bloody midfield. Andy Sinton, Trevor Stephen, David Batty, David Platt. So we've got Stephen on the right, Sinton on the left, Platt and Bats in the middle. Well. Platty and Batty. We'll come on to that. You'd think that. Oh, it's Graham, Graham Taylor been yeah, at the Graham jazz. Ta- yeah. Graham Taylor been at my dad's jazz cigarettes there. again, I think. 
as, uh, as Owen says, this is Graham Taylor and this is England. This is Euro 92. This is the second game in the tournament, forgotten, largely forgotten, and, and you will come on to why, but forgotten, sandwiched in between the highs of Italian 90. Not by the, not by the, the, the bacon eaters. And the, well, no, no, true, true. <laughs> not in Copenhagen. No, it's not absolutely. Been forgotten. Oh, bloody, no, God, no. Not by John not. Bloody Jensen. No, no. Oh, yes, and I've had the pleasure of speaking to John Jensen about Euro 92, but Graham Taylor is manager of this England team, Euro 92. It's a second game. Hopes will still be high for Graham. <sighs> this is, this, this is, is still, still an amazing team. How, how did we get on first game? This is still, can no, we not no. knock it? Huh? Nil, nil against Denmark. Okay. This is a mad midfield, given everything that had happened. So we're so we're not like I said, two years on from Italia ninety, your Waddles and your Gascoins and that things are things have been you know injuries have played their part a oh, little bit. Hell. So only Platts, only Platt remains. Well, exactly. This is it. You see. So let's go through those players just to give a bit of background in case the people don't know who these players are. But Andy Sinton could be described as a journeyman winger, but I think that would be a little bit of a disservice to him because he was a very small creative and very skillful winger did really well in West Impish Impish is a very good description Owen uh, did very well at Brentford QPR probably didn't quite hit the heights he should have done at either Wednesday or Tottenham and uh, played at Wolves briefly uh, James oh. I never knew this yeah. do you know that my thing about Andy Sinton is that for the entirety of his career he looks like a man who um, is about to shit himself he's got a very concerned <laughs> look on his face like <laughs> like that <laughs> And funny enough, obviously, in my research, we were looking at Wikipedia as a starter point. Obviously, we go and look at other sources. Um, no, we don't. The picture of him look, it looks exactly like that, what Owen's just described. That's like, the expression he had in his yeah, face yeah. for his whole career. Never but, happy or sad. So I think it's fair. But this is his peak of it. This, this moment, this match, is the peak of his career. He's playing for England on a, on a regular basis. Brilliant for QPR. Alongside him in midfield, we've got David Batty. Oh. Now, Almost certainly not a left winger. So, almost so. <laughs> what Batty? Some seen as a, some seen maybe retrospectively as a little bit of a again probably not giving credit that he's that he's due not more than the holding midfielder and actually during during this I found out that Harry Kuehl did a great interview with uh, Graham Hunter on the Big Interview podcast and actually said just to give people an idea of what sort of player David Batty was that he was Makaleli before Makaleli. David Batty was fucking brilliant. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't give him credit. I mean, he's yeah. also star. Of the greatest ever one video on the internet from his time at Leeds in in a pre season tournament. It might have been after this, might have been before this. Leeds play against Sampdoria. Sam, yes. Oh yeah, it's and and Batty for whatever reason just decides he's going to fucking wind every player on the Sampdoria team up. He, Roberto Mancini nearly has a fucking heart attack twice. <laughs> he's that he's that keen to kill him. Yeah. Yes. He's doing drag backs, pushing people over fucking yeah. hoardings. It's exceptional. Class. There's just it's a pre, there's simply no need for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. in the like the Makita tournament. Makita tournament. tournament. I was just about exceptional. To... Yes. Sorry. But but no, but David Batty, a wonderful footballer. And fam famously a man not into football, right? It was very much just like a job just for him. Just a job for him. Yeah. No, I don't he I don't think that's true. He's just gone and been a normal bloke. I don't yeah. think he was a, a um who was the left back who played for Spurs? Uh, Asu Akota. He didn't like football. Benoit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't like football. I interviewed him. What a lovely bloke. Just didn't like football. Just, yeah. <laughs> no, I think David Batty fucking loved football. Yeah. Fair enough. But alongside him, bizarrely, is in centre midfield, is Trevor Stephen. Now, I used to always get Trevor Stephen and Gary Stevens mixed up because I get players mixed up anyway. But and, and you know a lot of players. They both, a lot to get mixed <laughs> yeah, they both played for Everton. They both played for Rangers as well. And they both played for England. Yeah, it was a pain in the arse. I remember <laughs> it as well. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember you mentioned this before. So that, but he is also, he's normally, normally a little bit out, outside on the, on the wings. I always thought he played on the right. Yeah, so did I. But he, in this game, he's definitely, I've d I had to double check this because I thought this can't be Maybe right. Maybe that was Gary Stevens. <laughs> it was definitely Trevor Stephen because I checked but we'll go on to this in a minute why he might be playing centre midfield and then cutting in on the right was David Platt who would you think would probably be more central and that but yeah and obviously we We've met, we have mentioned David Platt on this podcast before because I think again talking about the amazing volley he scored when he's training or for when he's training as a coach at Man City but again I think Certainly in my era, one of the best players that I... That yeah, I tell me about him as a player. As a young listener, uh, all Pro I remember is the Belgian a, goal. A, a hugely underrated Hugely he underrated. Was, so he was at Man United as a kid, and then he didn't make it. Was it? Yeah, he went yeah, to yeah. Vancouver Whitecaps. Yeah. He went to Vancouver Whitecaps. Yeah. And then crew. Which was a, quite a weird route at the time. A lot of players went yeah. to Vancouver Whitecaps. Yeah, Beardsley yeah. did as well. Did, Beardsley did. And yeah. he was it was also briefly at United, Beardsley. Yeah. Very yes, briefly. Was, yeah. yeah, and then he came back and then he was at Crew. Yeah. And then, and then Villa. Villa, and then yeah, the Belgian goal is the is the. But his career exploded after explosion. He fucking he went. He was gone. Well, he went to Bari, didn't he? And I, I yeah. and I cannot 
not see David Platt wearing a Bari shirt without thinking of the amazing uh, Bari badge, which looks just like the Kellogg's logo, but still looks just incredible. Yes. But he does so well there that Juventus have signed, are signing it, have signed him this summer. So before the, before the Euro. So this is, this is, we've got player for Marseille, we've got a player for Juventus, and then you've got Sinton. Bat- Leeds are obviously just, yeah, David Platt Leeds have just won the league, haven't yeah, they? David Platt, who's now one of his main jobs is to supply Baggio. So we, I've, I've mentioned it very briefly, but let's just say Graham Taylor has been, done, been doing a bit of tinkering. So we've got Steve, Trevor Stephen in centre midfield. Sinton's brought in instead of Paul Merson, which, is a bit of a, which was at the time was seen as a strange move. Now France are managed by Michel Platini. Now, you, you know, the expressive midfielder, you know. For Crook. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. post, post-football career. Yeah. But France played very defensively and actually almost on the... And, and England have to play them on the break. Now, this game ends up being a bit of a board draw because England aren't the most exciting, even though this midfield is playing behind Alan Shearer <clears throat> and Gary Lineker, which you oh, would think... This... You would think any midfield's going to have fun just setting those two up, but... For whatever reason, it's not clicking for England at the time, and it doesn't click for England. I thought they were ships in the night. This is, I didn't sorry, realize this, they played this, together. This is what I wanted to talk about. There was only about. a couple of games where they played. Right. Wow. Well, it was in this they, tournament. The ships yeah. in the night moment happened at this tournament. Yeah. This, this yeah. is Alan Shearer's it's his debut appearance in tournament for England. Yeah. But I also thought that they were complete ships in the night. You know, you know when you get yeah. your, your timelines mixed up with the uh, with the dinosaurs and Jesus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this game is mostly known for Basil Bowley and, and absolutely fucking nutting. Stuart Pearce, as hard as anyone I've ever seen. Nutted the wank out of him. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely (laughs) fucking obliterated him. Not seen by the referee, so he gets away with it. And Stuart Pearce goes off, gets treatment, and in that time, England get a free kick on the edge of the box. Now, Stuart Pearce's adrenaline, one way or another, is absolutely fucking coursing through him. And he goes up and hits, and they wait for him to come back on so he can take the free kick. Honestly, (laughs) he absolutely hits the fucking hell out of this ball. (laughs) And it rocket. I'm surprised it doesn't break the crossbar. Wow. It bounces back out. England don't score. This game ends oh, nil nil. No. England then need to win against Sweden in the next game. So it's not a good result all round. And you know, this midfield should be doing better. You know, David Platt again probably playing out of position. Andy Sinton has a couple of chances. But is it fair to say, Sam? It just doesn't come Graham, together. The Graham Taylor had made his um, reputation as a, a direct manager. Yeah, yeah. Who, who relied on wingers getting the ball forward quickly, recycling the ball, getting into the box, which didn't necessarily translate as well from club level no, as it did I agree to international you, yeah. level. And he was a manager who relied a lot on coaching and he would have spent a lot of time with his players right. and it probably yeah, didn't. Yeah. And then he, he got, he was so fucking unlucky as England manager. Oh, he was desperately unlucky. Sean of Gascoigne yeah. for a start. Lineker coming to the yeah. end and being injured like it was, you know. He was so unlucky in that Holland game. I, I know he might not have had done as well as he probably should have done, but in Holland, that Holland game is... Did, got, you, ever, did you ever meet Graham Taylor? I didn't, unfortunately. You did, didn't you? It's. I, I reckon it's my great... It's never been written about. It's never, the interview's never gone anywhere. It was in the bowels of a hotel in Park Lane before the PFA Awards and or the, managed, or the LMA Awards. And Graham Taylor was in a tux. It was like going and visiting a, a fading vaudeville star downstairs before one of their last performances. And he was sat down there in his tux. And I was just in like dressed like this, I suppose. And I interviewed him and we were going to use it on a video. Never used it. But he was such a fucking lovely yeah. human being. Mm. That's, and I asked him a bit. I didn't really want to ask him about, you know, the t- the turnip and stuff like that. Yeah, but he yeah. just said, he said, I didn't do a great job with England, but they crucified me, and you shouldn't treat people like that. And I've never forgotten him. Fair enough. He's right, and I've I nearly yeah. melted into his arms. Fucking hell, man. Yeah. And anyone you meet who came across him, all the stuff he did with Elton, and you know, bringing him back from yep. the, the brink. Oh. But we're talking about midfield blunt rotation. Yeah, so I can't imagine Graham Taylor would have sparked one up. Yeah. <laughs> He wouldn't have done. R- roll us a fatty, Graham. Carlton's about to do something mental. You're going to need this. <laughs> well, he might have done because the midfield in the next game goes completely bonkers. Carlton Palmer, Neil Webb, Tony Daly, and David Platt. Now that is a nightmare, Blunt Road. Because <laughs> <laughs> he changes what, it completely. Three David, changes next game. Yeah, and then David Batty plays right back in the next game. Wow. So it, it's carnage. Oh, what, either way, he's not helpful. What himself. I love about the four names of this midfield is how inter- so English. <laughs> how interchangeable they are with each other. Yeah. So Andy Sinton could quite easily be Andy Batty. <laughs> and it could be David Sinton. Yes, yes, yes. It could Trevor be Stephen it could be, be Trevor anything. Platt. Yes, it's Trevor and David Stephen. Stephen. They've all they've all yeah. got yeah. the same name essentially. Yes. And it's incredibly <laughs> They're so English, aren't they? Yeah. So, so so English. Makes you proud, doesn't it? <laughs> so <laughs> English. Not a hint of anything but Anglo Saxon no, blood no, in no, these. Not even a little bit of the Channel Islands, not even a bit no. of Guernsey in well, the Sinton Sinton that might be a 
Ooh. Might be a shortened Italian name. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Since Tony came over, ran a, <laughs> ran a, ran a sweet shop. Since Tony came over. <laughs> if, <laughs> if, oh, very good. If the team, sheet, shout, if James, the team sheet was handed in and it was Andy Stephen, yeah, yeah. David Sinton, <laughs> yeah. Trevor Batty, <laughs> no one would have blinked an Yeah, you wouldn't bat an island. I would just finally say that anyone with two first names, yep. it's a first name and surname, can't be trusted. But... Me, me. I've got three of the cunts. <laughs> three, three first names. I know. People Trust, say it's up a lot. against the wall. It's seven, not the first seven time. Seven people in classes. Oh. We're fucked, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> can't, be tr- can't be trusted. Simply can't be trusted. <laughs> as he sits, as he as he sits three yards away from someone <laughs> with three first names and their name. I knew what I was oh God, doing. Yeah, I can't argue with it. I can't you argue. Three. With it. It's been said. Where, are you all right? Sorry, <laughs> we've just done this two minutes ago. Sorry, I didn't realise it was three. I was two. I was for me. It's a nightmare. Blunt rotation, to be honest. David Batty will be against drugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A like cup da- of tea and a packet of custard cream. Oh, yeah. Oh. David Platt will have like maybe tried it once. Didn't like it. Yeah. Made his head spin. Uh, In front and, of Roberto. Andy Sinton. Doesn't affect me. Doesn't affect me. <laughs> Doesn't affect me. Uh, Two minutes later, he's got Pink Floyd on. He's puking out the window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about, and I'll leave you, Trevor Stephen for you, James. Just fucking rolling. <laughs> Just rolling. I think this lot Being of... in Marseille can fucking knock them out. I think this lot are a fucking nightmare. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. They're all just the same man. We have our first nightmare blunt rotation. <laughs> Mundial joins the dots for football culture. And that's not a boast by us, but the words of an actual subscriber in our most recent reader survey. Why not see what they're on about and have a look at Mundial magazine? 100 pages of global football magic released four times a year. It looks great, smells great, and the writing isn't bad either. Go to mundalemag.com or follow the link in the show description to find out more. Right then, 101 things to do in football before you die is James Bird. He's been wearing a fleece for the last month, so he... (laughs) He might just fucking expire today in a, in, a, in a pool of his own dust. But if he doesn't do that in football and die, what is it you want to talk about, James? Isn't, the fleece was an airport purchase. He's a mountain man now. He keeps. I am this. a mountain man. You're a mountaineer? Yeah, just a mountain man. That's, just a man, that, yeah. that is where I belong. <laughs> Yeah. Not skiing necessarily. James. Not snowboarding. I was going to say. Is this because no, 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 it's not that. It's not that. It's just being in the fucking mountains. Have you is been this, to is this because you turn every small task into mentally scaling the face <laughs> of the eye? <idea> <laughs> nope. No. Nope. James, I've actually genuinely been up a big fucking mountain with you and you nearly had to go down because you had your uh, altitude. Oh, you got, oh. You got all faint. Oh. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> and I did. did. I was genuinely concerned. I did. No, what sort, I, of, mountain, did. What sort of mountain man can't suck the air in? One, that was a long time ago. And two, it was a very, very high mountain. Yeah. Oh god, it was fucking wild. It was fucking yeah. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't scared. I just had I had altitude. No, it was, it was I was worried for a while. Wow. I think I, I think I was hungover. You're a hill uh, guy, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You're hill. a hill, no, you're no, a hill no, guy. No, 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 no. Hill boy. I am a mountain man. <laughs> you're a hill guy. I'm a mountain man. I've just been in the mountains. Yeah. You're a hill guy. Uh, 101. <laughs> 101 things to do in football <laughs> before you die. Squeal like a pig. Squeal, please. Yeah. Squeal. Don't, please don't. Sorry. It scares Disgusting. me. Disgusting. Scares me. <laughs> Disgusting. Ed's shaking his head. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> it is from a film, though. It's not just it yeah, yeah. sexual peccadilloes. Did you hear no, no. go, that scares me. It don't do it. <laughs> He's... And my dad said, you should watch this film. You should watch this film. <laughs> so I recorded it. It was on overnight. At How like, old were you? Eight, eight, eight. It was on like 11 o'clock at How night. How old were you? 11. Uh, <sighs> you 11. 12, 13. 12? 13. <laughs> and I recorded it. It was off ITV, you know, like ITV late night film. Recorded it. Watched it the next day when on, on half term. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Scared the Jesus out of me. Your dad recommending <laughs> it is my favourite part. Yeah, you should watch this. It's brilliant. 101 things to do in football before you die. James Bird. Hello. It is to really talk to your old relatives about football. Um, oh. I think I actually learned this from my dad. So, like, when when all my grandparents were alive, he always used to say, when you go and see them, ask them questions, especially as a couple of them had Alzheimer's and stuff like that. It was just like, ask them, get them to talk about things that they like talking about. And I think that always, that rubbed off on me, shall we say. For a recent issue, I interviewed my dad about football. 
and um, I got him to basically talk about the attacks that he'd watched play for Wolves during his life and how they'd affected him in different ways. So he went all the way back to, to the 60s when he started to go and there was Kenny Hibbert and, and whoever else and then he went forward to Steve Ball and then he came through to, to Jimenez and Traore and yeah. Jota. Yeah, I think a lot of people have, have, have mentioned it and how much they liked it so it definitely struck a chord. Interviewing my own dad, I learned two things. The first one was that I'd never seen him cry before. And my dad talking about these memories of, of him being a youngster and then coming right back through to, to the current day, he started crying in front of me on like whilst I'm, I was I was talking and to this him. And was, this was recently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I realised I'd never seen my own dad cry and that was quite interesting. Trod on a nail. Trod on a nail. <laughs> and then the other one was that, the other one was that you, you know, your parents and your relatives won't be around forever. So you should sort of, yeah. you should mine them for, for as yeah. much interesting information as you can. Content. They, they were two things that I very much learned from my dad um, by interviewing him. The first one that was that his granddad, so my great granddad, worked on the turnstiles at Molyneux. And when my dad was a kid and he first started going, uh. he'd let my dad underneath the, wow. the barrier room for free. And that's such a beautiful never, image for me. And I didn't know. No, no, no. Because all the games you've people, been, all the... No, no, no. People don't talk, do they? It's no. amazing, that. No, no, I think it's brilliant. Though. English people I, don't I bet, talk. I bet if you sat down with your no. dad and, and just really was like, Dad, what did you... Yeah, you know, yeah. There'll I be mean, some... Oh, your, your dad would have some very interesting stories. <laughs> <laughs> my my um, dad never told me about that Busby thing until I started doing this. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then the other yeah. one was that um, when, he was, uh, when he was 20 or however old he was, he uh, went on holiday to your Marbella's, actually. <laughs> to your your Portugal's. Portugal's. And um, him and my uncle, who's his best mate, they had Steve Ball caps with massive horns. <laughs> 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 you know, sometimes... Me and my dad, I don't know, we, we bicker a little bit. And I think finding that level and that brilliant level of being football in this scenario we're talking about here, you find out so many things mm. that you would never know that you'll then keep with you forever. I, I will keep forever that my great granddad worked on the turnstiles at Wolves. That's fucking That's brilliant. Class, that. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. That's also, brilliant. I've also learned from your dad that um, <laughs> you shouldn't waste your bath water. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So was, John Bird, a man I like very much from all the times I've met, uh, met him, um, would, would, would reuse his bath water by taking it outside to clean the car. And you know what? Yeah. I think that's great. Ah, especially, even more so in the current age. Well, exactly. In big yeah. saucepans. Head of his time. <laughs> big big saucepans. saucepans. Scoop up the dirty bath water, walk down the stairs with it, and just, and just fucking <laughs> launch, it. launch it at the car. Launch it all over the fucking yeah. Honda. No. Class. No. But but you are right. What James. a man! What a man! You'll say that your great granddad worked in the turnstiles. Owen quite often. Who was it? Your relation played. Uh, my dad's great uncle, yeah, won the FA Cup, played left back for Wolves. No, Collins, yeah, 1908 it's FA Cup. Amazing. Yeah. Did you he, know? Did you always know that? Did early I'm, on? I've known it for uh, yeah, I've known yeah, it yeah, yeah, since I was 16, 17, I think. I think I remember it for that long. But he died the year my dad was born. But yeah, never career. He played 400 games for like Wolves and, and amazing and someone else. Wow. A great, great moustache in the um, in the photo. But my dad also, I mean, he, he he used to play Peter Knowles, who to anyone who doesn't know was God's footballer, greatest player Wolves ever had, who um, retired early because he was a Jehovah's Witness. Um, before that, was a bit of a shagger by all accounts from what, oh, what absolutely. we heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real about yeah. time. Yeah. Sh sh shagger, shagger with a fast car. Shagger with a fast car and, and, a, and a great haircut. <laughs> yeah. Peter Knowles! <laughs> <laughs> he knows his way around a G-strength. <laughs> Drives that Capri like it's a fucking tractor. Anyway, but yeah, he used to play. Peter Knowles used Brilliant. to used to board or used to lodge in a house near my dad's on the on the Warstones. Well, wet me like my dad's my grandparents' house, and they used to go and play and, and have a fucking play three and in with Peter Knowles. And there was another Wolves player as well. Wow. I can't remember. Amazing. Oh, it God. might have been Les Wilson who roomed <gasps> with Peter. <laughs> That'd be a mad <laughs> circle, wouldn't it? It could have been Mr. Wilson. Star. That'd be a mad circle. But you but you're right, and I. I don't have many memories of my dad's dad. Um, and, you know, him and my dad didn't get on very well no. at all. But I do, the memories I do have, we would go and my dad would sit in the back room and talk to his mum and smoke fags. And me and my brother would go sometimes through and talk to my dad's dad in the, in, in the front room. Yeah. Um, and he, the only thing he'd talk about was walls. Yeah. That was the only thing he'd talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's but look, I mean, there's generations of fucking men, especially, but now you know who are who are bonded through football, and we, we've talked about it before. Without without that, but it solidifies something, doesn't it? As a yeah, there's three thing. three or four now in my family, like five nephews, three of Man United fans, one. Si but every time I go home, like when I was, I read your. Funnily enough, I read everything 
the, the whole latest issue this week. And when I read that, that was the first thing I thought of, like going home. Every time I go home, my dad's there, one of his grandkids, and it's always just football. That's it. That's that's all we talk about. Three, what is it? Yeah, three generations. Yeah. It starts a conversation that can then lead to other conversations. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. what's important. Can lead to a, a cricket. Men- cricket. <laughs> <laughs> films. Footballers playing cricket. But when yeah, I yeah, ask yeah. my dad about it. Cricketers playing football. <laughs> <laughs> both of them, basically. Ian, Ian, yeah. Ian both of them at Yeovil and Scunthorpe. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, Do you know Steve Grusevic? Yes, yes, he played yeah, for Shropshire yeah, yeah, Cricket. Yeah. Jack Ray. My, yeah. my, dad's, my dad's quite a stoic man, you know, and, and when, when this can open up ways into talking about our... You, you, you emotions got to, you got and to, feelings. Like you said, I went to a number of games with my granddad and uh, I would never really spoke... Uncle Ernie we used to go with back in the day, my granddad's brother. And I, unfortunately, he died quite when I was quite young and I never got to talk to him about that. And you do have like snippets of conversation when you go into games, but then the game takes over or the post-match drink takes over and actually just sitting down, cup of tea in the front room or whatever, or, or nursing home. Yeah, I used to go and see my nan in a nursing home, yeah, yeah. and I'd always just ask her about like her childhood and yeah, about what she was like. She grew up, and you just learn, a, you learn a lot. My nan, she nearly passed last year, but then she's she's good now, and she's in a nursing home. She was quite lonely for ten years, and she quickly got charge of the remote control in the in the room. Yeah. And go in, they're all watching the fucking women's World Cup. Oh, yeah. she's putting Amazing. that on, and all old women, like yeah, yeah, one yeah, man, yeah, yeah. about ten of them, between. 80 and 100 probably and they're all just fucking cheering for the lionesses yeah my some of my favorite memories anyway talking to my nan but when we went on holiday she'd like you know get us to light her fags when we were seven and stuff like that and drink a martini which you know isn't ideal but she grew up in rural wales and was you know sounds like my nan (laughs) but but she would we would like mine her for stories on growing up in rural wales and it was all these characters yeah Yeah. people like that and it's yeah it is it it is it's great and if and you know if football's thrown in even even better 101 things you should do in football before they die (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's really fucking good though brilliant think about it oh man introducing the hat trick a new subscriber newsletter from Mundial each week there'll be three stories linked by a theme stories from islands stories about people stories about heroes stories about villains stories about love hope, despair, joy, and, of course, goals. Go to mundalemag.com to sign up to the hat-trick now. Ins and outs, outs and ins. James Bird, go. Oh, back to the mountains for the mountain man. (laughs) Up the reeking he goes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there was yeah, Primrose Hill. There was uh, <laughs> there was a moment. So so for a little bit of context, um, I recently uh, went to the Italian Alps because my uh, wife's family have got a tiny, tiny one bedroom cabin there that they've had up there for fifty years. We went up there, beautiful snow, and we went for a walk at one point, and we went for lunch at this like refugio like a sort of farmhouse place for people who are going on walks and need somewhere to stay and we put my daughter back in the car and put my two friends in the back closed both doors and until Matil- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and matilda got into the matilda got into the front uh the front door of the car and shut the door and i suddenly realized that for the first time in fucking i don't know since when there was it was completely silent <laughs> Oh. And I just walked to the edge of the mountain and closed my eyes for like five seconds. And I was like, I'm going to fucking try as hard as I can to remember what this sounds like. Yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm with you on this. So now. just appreciating silence. If you can get into a position, into a place where you can have fucking five seconds, close your eyes and then just fucking try and remember uh, it. Yeah, I do, I do this all the time. There's a great, uh, I think it's Rodney Dangerfield joke, which says like, um, going on holiday with my wife and kids. And... Um, Put them all in the car, walk round, walk round <laughs> to the other side. It's like, that's my fucking holiday. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I don't get no respect. <laughs> just, in, just, just enjoy the silence. Yeah. Anyway, my in this week is um, oh, spontaneously oh. getting tattooed. Not spontaneously. As a man who didn't have any um, any ink, as the, this modern parlance, for about 30 years, because I wanted to avoid the clocks and sleeves and all that. I got one and then you uh, got right back <laughs> on it. <laughs> Yeah, the, time, the timelines match. The timelines match, but we'll yeah. leave it there. I'm not sure yours are really tattoos. <laughs> to be honest, looks like Tom Bird's just drawn them on. Um, oh, anyway, oh. that's 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 called style, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe how much you pay for them. He's had you. I thought he was a mate. 
Uh, yeah, anyway. They were um, expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I was in London. Um, I came to have an haircut. Went to, it was in between Christmas and New Year. Went for something to eat. And I thought, oh, should I go and have a look in a cut of tattooists? But I never know what I want anymore and I can't be arsed. But there was a few I sort of had in my head. Went in this fucking studio upstairs. Started talking to a bloke. He showed me some of his designs and I was like, oh, could you draw me this? And he went, yeah. Drew it, done. Back up next Thursday. Fucking on you go. Brilliant. It's the best uh, yeah. way. And now he's DMing me to try and get And this is the big reveal. Owen, take your top off. And now he's... Uh... <laughs> it's my face on his chest. <laughs> it's not on my chest. <laughs> like Partridge in his stalker. <laughs> yes. It's not on my chest. <laughs> not... Oh, no. You, well, you did do a big reveal in the office the other day, to be fair. It's on my arse. We were on our own. It's on your ass. So when I bend over, you smile. <laughs> <laughs> in... <laughs> So, uh, padded football seats. Padded football sales, you know you bloody mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, just a padded sale of a football. <laughs> Where's Seb? Uh, he's there again. Fair enough. Um, Has he got his mitre delta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, well, he, he keeps trying to play rebounds and it just stops when it hits the wall. <laughs> just... Oh, yeah. just no, you're not heading it. Kicking it, you No, both. But, but, uh, yeah, oh, God. Anyway, padded football seats. Padded football seats. So I've been fortunate recently to be invited on a couple oh, of ge- to a couple God. of games where the seats are padded, shall we say. Uh, Odd prawn sandwich white. This yeah, is yeah. for where you fucking... And I have to say, there's you, you... a real comfort, a real comfort and, and pleasure to be found in a nice padded seat. Do you know you what know? I'm going to say? Out. Yeah. No, not, not in. Yeah. Out. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I, I would say it, because it's more it's the Toryification of Seb White and I'm going oh, no. to stop it <laughs> well it is he I, doesn't even realise he's doing it anymore Seb no. I am I am I'm shocked and and gutted yeah. that gutted. you yeah, put that yeah. in can I there's, yeah. a, there's a caveat to all this though oh. you've all got this. you've got piles <laughs> You've got an ingrowing hair. There's two caveats to this. <laughs> the old farmers <laughs> can be proof discomforting for me old me old Aris. Um, have, you, Aris. have you got have you got piles? Second, yeah. <laughs> Have you? Suppositories are much better than cream, everyone. Suppositories no. are much better than cream and a bit of just, fun as well. Did you not just push them back up with your finger? No, any, no. <laughs> Don't you? No. Oh, I'm saying. Yeah, but now you've gone fucking top flight Terry again. You were all right when you were non league. Now look top at you. Top flight Terry. It's, it's not necessarily the Toryfication of you, it's the Chelseafication of yeah. you. Yeah, uh, okay. I fair think enough. so, one thing, le- one thing leads yeah, to yeah, another. Yeah. It's all good, well and good support in the women's team. They've got some brilliant players. Tell me. February 1st, which was uh, recently. Uh, I was celebrating my three years of sobriety. And I know Owen covered this recently on, well, you know, I didn't, few cover, months I didn't ago. cover yours. <laughs> Owen covered his own recently, <laughs> a few months ago on the podcast. And yeah, fucking hell. Never thought I'd get here. Never ever thought I'd be sober. And The three Pete? Well done. The three Pete, yeah. Zizou would be proud. <laughs> no, well done. Zizou. Yeah, you, you know, but the most rewarding messages, and, and you know, not about like. <laughs> It's great doing this football podcast, great work with you guys, but when people say that you just subtly or normally or openly talk about your sobriety, you and Owen, that's the most helpful mm. thing, and that's helped me stop or me think about stopping drinking. So I would recommend it if you're struggling, um, all the usual stuff like that. But, yeah, it's been great for me. And Top work. Happy to be here. Well done. Love Congrats, all. Well done, well done both. For, you know. And um... Is that in? Get in. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tommy Sobriety is in, yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's a given. <laughs> now, uh, on to the um, insensitive James Bird. <laughs> We've let him wank on about a fucking piece. He's already had time in the mag. <laughs> Tommy's talked about his sobriety, and Birdo's... Oh, getting a point. <laughs> oh, well, they're nice, aren't they? Um... <laughs> Um, what? Uh, James could never be an alcoholic. He's never been able to drink more than two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Tommy, Tommy, congratulations. I, am, I do think that's excellent. I'm very proud of you. But my out is people being rude to the people working beyond the bar when you're getting a pint at half time oh, at a football yeah, match. Yeah. Where was this? It was at Brentford, actually, away. But in the oh, they're quite good at Brentford service wise, I think. I, I think the service. Was it, Wol- was it Wolves fans? Yeah, yeah, of course oh, it was Wolves fans. Yeah. yeah, just being rude. Oh, look at the head on that. And yeah. they've got a, they've got yeah. a stand there with a load of fucking stinky yeah, yeah. drunk football Coked fans. up. D- Darren from Briley Heath. Yeah. yeah, you know, Darren from Briley Heath. You, you might be my friend, but just be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't be he rude. He wouldn't be your friend. You wouldn't hang around with anyone yeah. from Briley Heath called Darren. That might. You got away from the Midlands because of that. <laughs> You got away, you got away, got yourself a fancy girlfriend and a different life, so you didn't have to hang around with people called Darren from Briley East. So did I. <laughs> so did. Oh, I might see when I go in for Christmas. So, yep, Wolves fans out. Um, <laughs> out of me. Oxygen, oxygen absorbers in snacks. Do you know what they are? No. 
you get a s- certain snacks, your fucking seaweed snacks, your biltongs yes. and things like that. Yeah. And in there they have those little oh. packets. No, I don't like them. You're I'm glad. I'm, well, I'm glad okay. they're in there because they keep the the food I'm about to eat moist. But often with like your biltong or something like that, I quite like to drink them. Uh, oh yeah. Like, okay. Get them like you know like you yeah, yeah, like yeah. you drink a bag of crisps like oh, yeah yeah just yeah. Get it in and you get two hands. You're doing oh, no, something else. No. no, I haven't done it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'd die, but I don't want to try. <laughs> no, no, no. And they're a pain in the ass, and they're all over my desk. Yeah, yeah. But they look like little snus things, do they? Yes. Yes. I know. Just little plastic packets yes. in a snack. In like seaweed. Yes. Yeah. You put them in between your gums, don't you, Seb? <laughs> in, between, in between his bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, I wouldn't, wouldn't. They're out. Seb. In the in a recent podcast, I spoke about my de- me developing a big love of the Big Bash League, and I ever since like I watched it when I was in Australia, I watched it all, all the time when I came back. Even had it on my phone on my desk sometimes, and I went going, oh, "What are you fucking doing?" But really invested in it, really got into it. I had the Big Bash app on my phone. You had a picture with your fucking with a the Big on Bash your head. A, the Big Bash app on your phone. You've had that on there for a while. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Private browsing. I completely got my days wrong and timings wrong, and I completely missed the final of the oh, team that I've been gunning for these whole they... few weeks, and they bloody won it. You weren't happy. I only it. found out on a text message from Australia so, yeah. after they'd won it. I was gutted. I missed out on that glory. So you might <laughs> too think comfy that... on your padded seat. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely crestfallen. I was dates, times, and being disorganised. Seb's job is literally to be good with dates, times, and be organised. And if you wonder sometimes why there's a frisson in this room, out. <laughs> Tommy. Phone calls. Unless there was Seb. Because oh. I, I like a little phone call with Seb. We have, we have a couple a week. But on the, no, on, on the Big that. Bash app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that, to, that, to, that Paul's tall, isn't he? <laughs> Why don't you like phone calls? I've just become too modern. I like texts, I like emails, I like Instagram, but they just make me uncomfortable. Uh, certain <laughs> family members, certain friends, I just it, I just feel, when I see it, I'm just like, nah. I nah. never answer, I know what you mean, but every time I then do have a phone call for something I, in a work perspective I need, I realise it's the best way. People, yeah. can, people can ignore emails, they can't ignore you talking to him. I had a great call recently about yeah. an article... I'm doing with a um, with a fellow journalist who's helping me out, and we fucking talked for about forty five minutes, and it made me realise how much I want to write the piece. If I'd have done that over email, we like, which is why I love them. this job, and I love talking to Seb about this job on the phone. Yeah, what do you two talk about? Big bash <laughs> production, <laughs> production, logistics, <laughs> okay, what Clips. logistics? What are you doing? Building Lego? <laughs> building Lego? Feedback? <laughs> getting get get the fucking running orders? Out. Oh, yeah. Come on, give me some more. Um, phone, call, phone calls are not out. <laughs> It's not easy to produce Fair. an award-winning podcast, you know. Exactly, brother. Yeah. That's why we got two of you. <laughs> um, this. Hey, BBC have fucking Ed. six. And Ed, fucking, they have fucking hell. fucking six yeah. or seven. Yeah, exactly. Most, most of them have fucking loads of the cunts. They all only have one fucking proper host, don't they? So remember that. Anyway, this is <laughs> reminding <laughs> you why you love football. I've been Owen Blackhurst. He's been James Bird. He's been Seb White. He's been Tommy Stewart. He's been Ed. Record as ever at Spiritland. Monday, I'll have always got issues of our magazine out. You can subscribe to it digitally. You subscribe to newsletters. You can buy print issues. There is fucking so much stuff you can buy. We can't even keep up with it ourselves. You ought to send some of the marketing out there on the internet, some of the paid social, some of the organic social. Just buy it. Yeah. Monday, I've always got issues. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave us a review. Please share. Please rate. Um, Keep them coming. Keep listening. Keep telling other people about it. Thank you very much. Reminding you why you love football is a Monday Owl and Football co-production. Produced by Tommy Stewart and Seb White. Hosted by me, Owen Blackhurst. And recorded on the run.